answer with our thanks to God and share them with the world. Oh, what a wonderful gift. Oh, what a wonderful gift. Advent is a twinkling time of stars and candles, of bright Christmas lights in city streets. Advent is a time of light to celebrate the light that Jesus brought. Christmas is a giving time of presents and cards, of cookies, baking, and shared Christmas meals. Christmas is a time of gifts to celebrate the gift that Jesus brought. This twinkling giving time is full of promise and expectation, hope, and joy as we celebrate the big surprise, God's greatest gift, Jesus Christ. But do we look for new surprises? Do we look for God among our gifts and Christmas lights? Well, let's do that. We look for glimpses of God every day. We wait for baby Jesus to be born. And as we've already lit our candles for hope and peace, today we also light our candle for joy. Amen. Joyful God, if I wanted to sow joy, I wouldn't use words. I would turn the music all the way up and push the tables against the wall until we had room to dance. I would roll the windows down and drive you out of town until fresh air filled your lungs. I would squeeze your hand and look you in the eye so that you would know that you are not alone. I'd lay down the picnic bl blanket and we'd look at the stars so that nothing could separate you from God's great beauty. I'd open my door like Elizabeth did for Mary. I'd tell you to stay as long as you like. Make yourself at home. What's mine is yours. And maybe we'd sing. And maybe we'd laugh. And maybe it would be enough to be in the presence of God and each other. If I wanted to sow joy, that's what I'd do. So sing me your song. We've got dancing to get to. May it be so. Amen. Hi, I have a Christmas story to share with you today. It's called Pippin, the Christmas Pig. Pippin stared up at Naughty, a grumpy old donkey. Naughty, you look all excited, she said. Of course I'm excited. It's Christmas tomorrow. What's Christmas? Pippin asked. What's Christmas? Naughty repeated. Don't be pignorant. Everyone knows about Christmas. The tips of Pippin's ears went very pink. I hope you remember that my family gave the first gift, Naughty went on. The baby's mother rode on a donkey all the way to Bethlehem. Christmas couldn't even begin until she got there. The curl went out of Pippin's tail. Nobody told me a thing about Christmas. My mother, they said, we're almost late because of the slowpoke donkey, Bess said with a gentle moo. My great-great-grandmother gave her manger the, for the baby's bed. Without her, there would have been nowhere to put the baby to sleep. The best present was the manger. What baby? What manger? Pippin begged. Nobody noticed her. And I still don't know what Christmas is, she said. The hay in the manger was full of prickles, muddled Curly. They would have scratched the child's face. One of my family had to give the mother a lamb's fleece cushion. 
to soften the bed. The soft wool was a welcome gift, I can tell you. Pippin's ears were now bright pink. But where were the pigs? She demanded in her biggest voice. Don't fret, Pippin, Bess said. Christmas has nothing to do with pigs. What present could a pig possibly give a baby anyway? Especially a baby as special as that one. If there were donkeys and cows and sheep, there must have been pigs, Pippin st stated. Once again, nobody was listening to her. My very, very great-grandparents sang to him, said Cuckoo, the pigeon. The crowd of angels and shepherds kept him awake until my family cooed a lullaby. That song was the first importance that night. Pippin stomped her tiny hoof. But what did the pigs do? She said. They must have been there. They must have done something. No pigs were there, the others said. The very idea. The child was a king. The holy stable was no place for pigs. Then Bess spoke up. Pippin, face it. What could pigs have gotten a holy child? Pigs have nothing worthy. Pippin hung her head in sadness. The barn door stood open a crack and slowly she went towards it. Then she pushed it further open with her snout. She had to get away. Once outside, she waited. They might call her back. Nobody called. They had not even noticed her leaving. I'm going to go where pigs matter, but Christmas doesn't. Pippin announced in a shaky voice, and I won't come back, never, ever. As she set out, a gust of wind, wind struck her full in the face. Snowflakes stung her eyes, and frost did the tips of her ears. She almost fled right back inside, but she forced herself to go forward. The cold was bitter and soon Pippin could no longer see the barn through the whirling snow. She passed a tattered scarecrow who leered and waved one ragged arm at her. Farther on the way, she saw a blue jay whose feathers were all blown backward. The hunched bird was so miserable. Pippin felt hurt in her tail and it stiffened into a curly icicle. I will die out here, she whimpered, if I don't turn back. But she had sworn never to go back. They didn't want her. They had said pigs were good for nothing. At long last, Pippin reached the main road. She peered up in the mailbox and wished she could climb inside. But she passed it and just kept going. Down the road, she stopped to catch her breath. Though the, through the snow, she glimpsed a woman walking towards her, carrying a baby in her arms. Pippin moved closer for a better look. The woman staggered. She had no gloves, no hat, and her jacket looked very thin. The little girl was so soundly asleep that her head nodded on her mother's shoulder. It looked too heavy for her to carry much longer. Poor things, Pippin murmured, forgetting her own troubles for just a moment. Shh, the woman cooed at her baby. We have so far to go, but we may, maybe we can find a nice warm place to rest, she shivered. Pippin knew where to find a nice warm place to rest. She had sworn to never return there, but this was an emergency. Follow me, she grunted and nudged the woman along the road until they came to the long farm lane. Maybe the wind had dropped for Pippin. It felt a little warmer. Even the scarecrow's smile looked a little friendlier. At the barn door, the little pig pushed ahead. Listen to me, she called to the animals. Don't interrupt, Pippin, said nobody. 
We are making Christmas plans. I don't care, Pippin yelled. Whatever Christmas was, it was long ago, and I have a baby here who needs a place to sleep right now. Bess's jaw do- dropped as she, could, as she saw the woman clutching her tiny baby. It's Christmas all over again, the woman whispered as she entered the barn. Gently, she laid her baby down in the manger to feed her. The baby curled up and started sucking her, th- her thumb. Bless you, little pig. It is warm in here, said the woman. Warm and safe. My word, they're both asleep already, Kukuru whispered. Then all of the animals stared at Pippin. Who's that woman? Pippin, we can't take in someone homeless, someone we don't even know. My very great, Bess began, we'll need milk, said Pippin. We'll need some warm, soft wool. We'll need your blankets. We'll need lots of lullabies. Your great-great-grandparents aren't here, so we must help this baby ourselves. But we're not as special as the baby. Of course she is. All babies are special. You're right, Naughty said. I'd forgotten. When the farmer and his wife came in to feed their animals, they saw the young woman covered with Naughty's old blanket asleep in the hay. Then they caught sight of the baby laying in the manger. It's Christmas, the man said softly, right here in our barn. It's a miracle, hushed the wife. Let them sleep and we'll keep watch. When the couple left, Pippin looked around and saw what they had seen. Naughty's warm blanket, curly soft wool, Bess's manger and milk. You were right, she said. None of these gifts are from me. Pigs don't really have anything to give. Thank you all for being so kind to them. The other animals looked down at the little piglet. Oh, Pippin, how silly you are. You gave us your, our very own Christmas. You gave us a chance to give ourselves instead of boasting about our grandparents. Don't you see that that's the biggest gift of all? It took a tiny little pig, laughed Naughty, to teach us what Christmas is. Welcome to Craft Time. Our Gospel reading this week was about John the Baptist. Do you remember John the Baptist? He was the guy that was the forerunner, that means the person that came before the Messiah, who is Jesus. And his job was to baptize people, as well as to tell people about Jesus and that he was coming. He would baptize people, though, by immersing people underwater. Now, in our church, we baptize people by sprinkling them or rubbing water on their head. It's a little bit of a difference, but it's really the same thing. So for our craft time today, we are going to make John the Baptist bath buddies. I know that sounds a little weird maybe, but they're a lot of fun. And you don't even have to use them in the bath. You can use them in the lake or the swimming pool or in a puddle or in a bowl. Uh, What you'll need to get for this craft is a sponge, a sharpie, some scissors, and a bottle of water, a bowl of water rather. If you gather those things together, I'll meet you over at the craft table. Welcome to the craft table. As I said, our craft today is John the Baptist Bath Buddies, which is essentially a little man cut out of a sponge, or a little person cut out of a sponge. Now, Uh, You don't have to use this in the bath. It could be a lot of fun if you one of your chores around the house is maybe helping with dishes You could use the the bath buddy to help with dishes as he washes the dishes Or if you like to play in uh, swimming pools and stuff you could use them to play in the swimming pools So like I said, you will need a sponge a sharpie marker a pair of scissors and a bowl of water just to test it if you want to test it now Here's one thing that I didn't include in the list of um, supplies that you need um, was a cutout because this is a way that I get around the fact that I am not a very good artist at all. I'm a terrible artist. So you can, if you are a good artist, you can just draw a little person on the sponge. But if you're not a good artist like me, you can get someone else to draw it and then you can just 
put it on your sponge and trace around it. Or what I did is I just used a little gingerbread man cookie cutout and I put that on and I traced around it so that I had the shape of a little gingerbread man on there that I could then use as my bath buddy. So we have our sponge, we've drawn or traced around our shape, and now we're gonna use our scissors. Now, you're gonna have to use your sharpest pair of scissors at home, so it's a good idea to have an adult around or an adult to help you because sponges can be difficult to cut into. I mean, the one I'm using is pretty thick, it's about an inch, just over an inch thick, and so it can be hard cutting. So use your sharpest scissors um, or get an adult to use the scissors for you. That's also good. You know, get your parent or aunt or uncle or grandparent and you're just going to cut out the shape that you drew on the sponge. And it's always easiest if you cut from the outside and go in. If you try to cut in from the inside out, that could be a little more difficult. But if you always start your cuts from the outside of the sponge, that can help you be a little more efficient and get better cuts for your little bath buddy. See, there we go. And now I just have two little armhole ones to do. So I'm gonna get the beefy part of the scissors and you don't have to cut it all the way. A lot of times you can just cut out a bit and then tear it out. It's the great thing about sponges there. They can be ripped easily if you need to. You don't have to be a perfect cut because you can come back to it, as I'll show you in a second, to clean it up a bit if you have extra little bits of sponge in places that you don't want it. So I've got the bulk of it off right now. I can just go by now and just cut off the, the pieces that are maybe still around a part of my pattern that I don't want. And just clean and trim those edges up. Give him a little haircut with sponge. Sponge cut, I guess. <laughs> and just trim those last little bits up. So what we're gonna do now is we can take our Sharpie if you want, and you can draw a little face on them. I'll do it facing you so you can see. So I'm just gonna put a couple eyes. I'm gonna keep mine like a gingerbread man. So I'm just gonna put a couple eyes in. And a nice big smile, because he's very happy and maybe some buttons for his, his cloat. So there we go, I'll put buttons on this friend as well. And there's our bath buddy. And if you want to try out your bath buddy, you can get that bowl of water and you can just baptize him or put him in the bath water yourself. And sponges are great because even when they're full of water, they float. I wish that I floated. And then you can wring him out and he's ready to go. The good thing about using a Sharpie is that they're permanent marker, so you see you don't have to worry about it coming off in the water. And so your bath buddy can go with you in the bath, can go with you in the swimming pool, or it can just help around the house with dishes. Thanks for joining us for our craft today, and I wish you a very blessed Advent season. Bye now. Hi friends! Today we're going to learn the third verse of Silent Night. Okay, so we know that it starts with Silent Night, Holy Night. Then we're gonna say Son of God. So Son, you're gonna take your hand with your thumb tucked in from your forehead and then down like you're holding a baby. So Son of God. God also has your thumb tucked in just like this. And you go from your forehead down your face. Um, and then, oh, love's pure light. So love is you cross your arms like you're giving someone a hug. Pure, we're just going to kind of sweep one hand on top of the other. And then light, you're going to fold your middle thing, finger and your thumb together and flick it on your chin. Like that. And then radiant beams. Radiant, we're going to have our hands open in front of our chest and then kind of like push them out and kind of wiggle your fingers. Um, so radiant, and then beams, we're just going to kind of, like we're making a beam from up above, from thy, it's just a hand up in the corner, 
wholly we know is just the H. And then face, just circle your face with your index finger. And then with is just your fists and bring them together. The dawn, dawn, you're going to make, this is an F shape. So it's a circle and then your three fingers and you're going to have it underneath your other arm and bring it up like the sun is rising. Of redeeming grace, redeeming, we're going to do the sign for save. And then grace, we're going to have a fist up at the top and then open it into an open hand in front of our chin. And then... We have Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, and that repeats a couple of times. So Jesus, you take one hand open like this, and the other hand you make a curved shape with your fingers, and you tap it, and then you switch. So this is our sign for Jesus. At thy birth, we're just going to do thy again, and then birth we know. So Jesus, at thy birth. So the whole song is silent night holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. And then the second verse, silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing alleluia. And then we have Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. And then our third verse, which we just learned, silent night, holy night, Son of God, O oh love's pure light. And then we have radiant beams from thy holy face <laughs> with the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus at thy birth Jesus Lord at thy birth 